What's going on, y'all? It's your man, Supreme, and welcome back to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this is episode 51 of The Real Rap Show, the story of Larry Davis. Now, before we get this started, I would like to say thank you to everyone who has been tuning in to The Real Rap Show since day one. All the new subscribers, everyone in the comments, and also everyone that gives me great feedback about the show. Follow The Real Rap Show on Instagram at It's The Real Rap Show. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so you can be notified whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Now let's get this started. In the 1980s, drugs, drug dealers, and police corruption was at an all-time high. Murders, robberies, and kidnappings were a regular thing back then. It's been said that in the 1980s, there were more cops robbing drug dealers than there were stick-up kids robbing drug dealers. Back then, a lot of drug dealers would get arrested for selling drugs, and the police would only take the drug money and let them go. A lot of dudes would get arrested with large amounts of drugs, and in return for their freedom, they would do work for these cops and help them get other drug dealers arrested or killed. Or sometimes they would put these dealers back on the street and make them sell drugs for them. But in the Bronx and the rest of the boroughs in New York City, crack was king. And if you sold it, you lived like one. Larry Davis got caught up in the drug trade at a very young age and started to sell drugs. Back then, selling crack was the thing to do. There was kids as young as 10 and 11 years old outside selling crack. A lot of kids came from poverty-stricken homes where their parents were strung out on crack. The mothers mostly were outside selling themselves for drugs pretty much abandoning their own children. So a lot of kids were pushed out there simply because there was nothing else. Now, somehow, Larry Davis got tied up into selling drugs for the cops. How? I'm not sure. Maybe Larry got arrested, and in return for his freedom, he was given the option to sell for them or go to jail. What would you have done in that type of situation? During his dealings with these cops, Larry was involved with a young lady he was in love with who was pregnant with his child. At that point, Larry didn't want to sell drugs anymore because he had a child on the way. So he wanted out of the drug game. He also was becoming tired of being used by these cops. He didn't like the fact that these cops would come inside his house like they lived there to give him more drugs to sell or pick up money from the drugs he sold. Larry had robbed other drug dealers for these cops. He also had killed other drug dealers for them. Larry had a little team of dudes helping him sell the drugs. When the police in the area saw Larry's crew out there selling drugs, they would never arrest them because they knew that they were selling for Larry and that money belonged to those officers. So it was like they were being protected by the cops. Larry's girlfriend ended up losing the baby. The doctors at the hospital told Larry that the baby didn't survive because of the drug use from the mother. Larry was in disbelief because he never knew that his girlfriend was sniffing cocaine. Larry's girlfriend ended up telling Larry that one of the cops he was selling for was giving her the drugs. And he was the one that got her hooked on the drugs. Larry Davis was furious. He already was about to stop selling for these cops. Now, come to find out, this guy is banging my girl and drugging her up with cocaine while she's pregnant with my child, and my kid doesn't survive because you were giving her drugs behind my back? He felt like those cops were responsible for his child's death. Larry Davis had a plan to get a large amount of drugs from these cops, sell it, and never give them their money. And this is where things made a turn for the worst. Larry Davis sold the drugs and ran off on the plug. He went into hiding because he knew they were out there looking for him. After a few days, the police began locking up all of Larry's crew that was outside selling drugs. Larry's crew was in shock. They didn't know what was going on. At first, they were letting us work. Now they raid the block. Next, they raided Larry's mother's house. Larry wasn't there. 
The police told Larry's mother, when we catch your son, we're going to kill him. They wanted that money. Larry also knew too much. He had dirt on them, and they had dirt on him. They didn't want him to get a chance to expose what they were doing. Larry Davis had to die. Hit the like button and tear the comments up. Does anybody from the Bronx know who this girl is that was pregnant by Larry Davis back in the days? And is she still alive today? Now back to the story. Larry Davis was on the run for days. Police then put out an all-city bulletin on Larry Davis and had Larry's picture on every news station in the tri-state area claiming that Larry was a crazed armed killer who was responsible and wanted for the killing of five drug dealers in the Bronx. After the police raided Larry's mother's house, they wiretapped Larry's sister's house phone. When they raided her house, Larry was there. He had told his sister they was coming. When they did come, Larry's sister was on the phone. She didn't know that the police was at the door. While on the phone, she walked, unlocked the door, and said, come in, and walked back into her kitchen. With Larry already having a hint it was them at the door, he picked up his niece. So just in case if they saw him, they wouldn't shoot because he had a child in his hand. But the lead officer of the pack had a 12-gauge shotgun. And as soon as he saw Larry, he aimed it right towards Larry's head and shot it. But Larry did some Matrix shit and moved his head back real quick and it was only grazed in the head and knocked to the floor. Now when Larry hit the floor, he had a 9mm on him. The child was unharmed, but Larry then fired back and I'm not going to get into the details of what happened after that because it is kind of graphic. I will say that he ended up hitting six of them in the mouth, in the nose, the shootout in Larry's sister's house lasted about 10 minutes. Larry ended up jumping out of a window and escaping. Hey yo, if you thought how they was looking for him the first time was crazy, now, huh, after this, he shot six of them inside of an apartment and got away. Yo, the manhunt for Larry Davis was so intense that the city had the Bronx on lockdown they had streets blocked off it wasn't really nobody outside walking around doing nothing it looked at like the pandemic that's how empty the streets was in the bronx i was a little kid living in brownsville <laughs> and my moms or my grandmoms would not let me and my little sister go outside and play because of larry davis this dude had new york so hot man Everybody thought they saw Larry Davis. His hair scared the shit out of you. People were so scared to death, everybody thought they saw this nigga. Everybody was like, yo, I saw Larry Davis. Y'all better stay in the house. They said Larry Davis out here. Man, it got to a point where Larry Davis in New York was like a UFO because it was so many reports of sightings and people saying that they think they just saw him. It was really crazy, man. Yo, they had Larry Davis' picture on every news station that existed. It was like all-day news. They was breaking TV shows, giving special reports on where he might be. You could have lived in Connecticut, Jersey, way up in Binghamton somewhere, and called the cops and said, I think I saw Larry Davis go in the drugstore by my house. And in less than 10 minutes... The whole precinct would show up at that drugstore in full riot gear. The emergency response tactical unit with canines, cops with rifles, sharpshooters on the roof and all that. That's how bad they wanted that dude. It was so many false alarms and I'm talking about every borough in New York City. Get in the comments. How old was you during all of this? And am I right or wrong? Was your hood on fire because of Larry Davis and you wasn't even in the Bronx? Yo, it was so hectic that the police commissioner and Mayor Koch came to the Bronx. Police was everywhere. Larry Davis dipped inside of a project building and ran up to the second floor. Now, somebody from outside saw him go in the building, so they called the cops. And once again, I think I saw Larry Davis, so they came. 
And by the time they got there, Larry Davis was up on the second floor. So he ran up to the 14th floor. Now, when he gets up to the 14th floor, he's wandering around the hallways. So this lady came out of an apartment. Now, this lady looked him dead in the face, but she did not know that he was Larry Davis. So Larry asked her, he said, Miss, you see all those cops outside? And the lady said, yeah, I'm just leaving my neighbor's apartment. I'm about to go down to my place now to see what's going on. She said, they saying that that guy Larry Davis is out here. And Larry Davis looked at it and said, well, you know, don't start yelling or nothing like that, but I'm Larry Davis. Now, this lady is standing there scared to death, in shock. Larry said, can I please hang out inside of your apartment for just a little while until the police clear out? He assured the lady that he would not harm her or whoever was in her apartment. And the lady agreed and let Larry Davis hide out in her apartment. When Larry got inside her apartment, she had some small children inside the apartment. So Larry sits down and begins to tell the lady the entire story on why the police is looking for him. And a little while later, this lady's husband walks inside of the apartment. So the wife begins to explain to the man, I'm pretty sure her husband knew about the story who didn't know. So when she explained to him that that was Larry Davis, you know, and why he was there, the man had a meltdown. An uncontrollable amount of fear took over the man. He started praying and begging God and asking God to help them and keep them safe. The man, it got so crazy that Larry Davis and the wife had to calm the man down inside the apartment. He was losing it. He was so scared that that was Larry Davis in his apartment. Now, after a while, Larry Davis and this man's wife finally got her husband under control. I mean, the guy was still shaking like a leaf, you know, because this was a religious family. The guy was trying to hold it together, but they was there in the house. And I don't know why Larry Davis did this, but this is where Larry Davis fucked up. Larry Davis you know, wanted to get the kids in the house something to eat. For some reason, it wasn't no food in the house. Maybe the lady didn't go shopping. I don't know what the case was, but the kids, it wasn't no food in the house. And Larry Davis had money in his pocket. And he said, yo, I want to get y'all some food since we up here for so long. You know what I mean? So he told the husband and this guy was the wrong person to send out there. I'm going to say it again. This is where Larry Davis fucked up. Now, the police is still outside. They inside the building all over the area. So Larry Davis tells the husband, I want you to go get the kids something to eat. When you on your way, I want you to stop at a payphone and make a phone call for me. He said, the number that you're going to call is tapped. He said, so don't stay on the phone too long. I want you to call this number and tell whoever answered the phone that I'm all right and not to worry. Now, the man scared to death. He agreed to go. Larry Davis, this is where you fucked up because tear the comments up. I would have sent the wife to go do this because I already had a bond with the wife. She kept it more real than her husband did. She wasn't even as scared as this nigga was. So I would have sent her to go make the phone call and to get the food. And I would have said, I'm going to keep this scaredy cat nigga in here with me. I'm not sending his ass outside. He damn near about to have a heart attack in the house right now. So why would I even send him out there? But Larry Davis wanted this nigga to go. So the man agreed. The man went out there, made the phone call. And he out there so scared, damn near fucked the phone call up and stayed on the phone for too long. When Larry Davis told him, the phone is tapped. Don't stay on the phone for too long. He gets the Chinese food, comes back to the building. When he gets in the elevator, like I said, it was cops all in the building, all around the building. So some cops gets in the elevator with him. And he's standing there scared to death with the bag of Chinese food. And he listening to the cops. And the cops is saying, you know, if this guy is in this building, whoever apartment he's in, you know, I'm killing everybody. Who was ever helping, aiding this guy or hiding this guy out, I'm going to kill everybody inside the house. So this guy hears that shit and he goes into the meltdown phase again and he looking at the cop and he took him out. You know, what you mean you going to be killing people inside the house, man? You know, you can't be saying stuff like that, man. And the cops looking at him like, you know, what the fuck are you talking about? And the, he telling the cops, you know, you can't be saying you're going to kill people, 
you know, if they hiding this guy and the cops are looking at him like, you know, what are you talking about? He tells the police, you know, I want to talk to your supervisor. And the police is like, yeah, for what? And he tells him, you know, I, I think I know, I think I know where he at inside this building. You know where he at inside this building. What? So they take this dude back downstairs to talk to the captain. He tells the captain, Larry Davis is hiding out inside of my apartment. Somehow my wife ran into him in the hallway or something like that. He persuaded my wife to let him hide out inside the apartment. I came home from work. This nigga sitting in my living room talking to my wife. I don't want this nigga inside my house. My kids is up there, my wife, and I think this guy might have a gun on him. So what they did was they didn't rush the crib because the kids and the wife was there. So what they did was they had the guy to give them his phone number and they called the house. And when his wife answered the phone, it was the police. So now she know that they got her husband downstairs. She scared to death because she like, yo, if I tell this dude that this nigga went out there and told, he fuck around and kill all of us in here. But what she did was she told Larry the situation and she gave Larry the phone and Larry talked to the cops. So Larry Davis told the police, listen, fuck y'all. I know how y'all get down. I'm not surrendering to y'all because y'all niggas been trying to kill me for the last 17 days. So I'm not coming out there to y'all. If y'all want me to surrender, call the fucking feds and hung the phone up. So they followed his orders. They didn't want nobody else to get hurt. They didn't want the police to rush up there. We know what happened to the last batch of cops that tried to, <laughs> that tried to get them. So they're not doing that again. So they listened to him. They called the feds. The feds came. The feds called the house and told Larry that he was safe, that they was going to come upstairs and try to get him to come out the apartment. They spoke to Larry through the door. Larry gave the gun to the wife. The wife notified the police and let them know that she had the gun, that he was unarmed. They wanted to make sure <laughs> that this time he didn't have nothing. She verified that she had the weapon and Larry surrendered to the feds. Now, when they walked Larry out the building, it was so many people outside, it was ridiculous. It was people that lived in the area. It was news people, magazines, photographers. It was so many police, you couldn't believe it. Emergency response unit. They had canines out there because Larry Davis was like a ghost. Everybody had thought they saw him and it was so many fake sightings. So to see this guy in person come out the building, people couldn't believe it. Now, when they get the nigga down to the precinct, like I said, it was so many police and media and news out there. It was almost similar to the day that they brought Lee Harvey Oswald into the precinct. It was that. When Larry Davis got before a judge, he had five cases. He had the killing of five drug dealers in the Bronx, the attempted murder of the six cops, a shooting in Upper Manhattan, another shooting where they claimed that he had shot somebody through a door, and kidnapping. While he was on the run, he had a friend of his to drive him somewhere so he could hide out, and for that, they charged him with kidnapping. Now, Larry Davis had all these cases with two legal aid lawyers. Let me explain to y'all how bullshit legal aid lawyers are, because Larry Davis didn't have no money. Legal aid lawyers work with the DA to get you to plead guilty. All they are there to do is pretty much tell the judge whatever you said happened. They are not there to help you. So for all the street dudes at this time that's watching Larry Davis attempt to take a case like this with shooting six cops to trial with two legal aid lawyers, nigga, you might as well have let them cops kill you. Now, Larry Davis had to tell everything that went on, how he sold drugs and killed for these cops. But on Rikers Island, they was tearing Larry Davis' ass up. Them COs hated him for what he did to those cops. A lot of cops and captains knew captains and COs on the island, and they was waiting for Larry Davis. Every house he went to, they was tearing his ass up. They had other inmates try to do stuff to Larry. It got so bad that the lawyers in the court had to have him move to federal custody just so he would live through the trial. Now, during trial, they had to go back to Larry's sister's apartment 
for proof of the bullet trajectories to see who fired first. And the forensic analyst proved that from the information he collected at Larry's sister's apartment that Larry hadn't fired first. It was the police who had fired first. The cops also said that none of them had shotguns, but Larry had a 12-gauge graze on the top of his head. They proved the cops lied, and Larry Davis beat the case of the attempted murder on the six cops, and they went ballistic. They could not believe that the jury said not guilty. Also, he was found not guilty in the killing of the five drug dealers, in all the other cases. I mean, they could not believe it. The media, the news could not believe that this black man, after this 17 day hideout, had just beat all the cases. The only thing they charged Larry Davis with was having a gun and firing a gun. And he was only given a five to 15 year sentence for that. Five to 15 years, Larry Davis is sent up north to start doing his time. In five to 10 years, Larry Davis could be back on the street on parole. So while he's up north doing this time, you know the system, because they was not trying and they was not going to let him get away with this. While he was locked up, they found another body and made up another case and said that he killed some Spanish dude. So now they went and got fake evidence and witnesses and all this other crazy fake shit they was not going to rest until that man got life in jail. They brings him back down now to fight the case for this new body that they said he did. But what was weird about this case, Larry Davis didn't do this. They even had two witnesses, the girlfriend and I think a, a crackhead or something like that or a neighbor. Well, there was this Spanish drug dealer dude they got killed. And they said that Larry Davis had killed this guy. They had two verified witnesses that knew Larry Davis did not kill this guy. So Larry's lawyer interviewed the lady and the lady told the lawyer that Larry Davis didn't do it. It was three Spanish guys that did it. She even gave them the three guys name. So, but for some reason, the court would not allow this lady to come to court and testify and say Larry didn't do it. Because they wanted to give Larry life for that last shit he did. They kind of framed them on this one. Because they did not allow the lady to come to court and say he wasn't the guy. If she would have been allowed to come and say that, he would have beat that one. But they said, nigga, you ain't going to beat this one. They found Larry Davis guilty of a body he did not do and gave the man 30 years to life. Years later, while serving his 30-year-to-life sentence in Shawangunk State Prison, a new inmate came into Larry's dorm, and the guy was charged with molesting a child. And somewhere down the line, Larry and the guy started doing business. Now, from my personal knowledge about jail, Larry either was juggling with this dude, and I spoke about that in my episode, How I Lived Like a Kingpin When I Was on Rikers Island. And juggling is when someone new comes in the dorm and they don't have no money or no commissary. And usually the person or persons that's running that house will be selling commissary or will offer you stuff that you have to pay back in double. Or Larry could have been giving the guy drugs and he owed Larry. So Larry had to keep this guy protected because he owes him. If something happens to this guy, he can't pay Larry back. So juggling with someone with power kind of puts a shield around you while you and this person is doing business. Now, there was a dude inside the jail who was a Spanish crypt member who went by the name of Blue Boy. Now, Blue Boy wanted to get at this dude, but Larry Davis was protecting the guy, telling Blue Boy, yo, he my peoples, me and him is in business right now, and I'm holding him down. So Blue Boy got mad at Larry Davis for not only jumping in and protecting the guy, but yo, why are you holding down a child molester? So now, Blue Boy and Larry Davis got beef. And on the evening of February 20th, 2008, inside the yard of the Shawangunk State Prison, Larry Davis and Blue Boy got into a heated argument, ending with Blue Boy stabbing Larry Davis. 
Blue Boy walked away from the stabbing and began talking to another group of men that was a few feet away. Larry Davis got up and walked up behind Blue Boy and hit him in the head with his cane two times. Blue Boy turned around and grabbed Larry Davis and they got into another fight. Larry Davis was stabbed 13 times and died on February 20th, 2008. Blue Boy was convicted of killing Larry Davis and did a total of 39 years in prison. And in December of 2021, he was granted parole and was released from prison. Soon after his release from prison, being that he was on parole, Blue Boy had to get a job. So he got a job as either he was a security or the doorman at one of those legal weed dispensaries. And one day while he was at work, somebody walked in there and tried to stick up the place. Now I'm not sure if Blue Boy disarmed the guy and took the gun from him or Blue Boy had a gun on him. Anyway, while the guy was sticking up the place, Blue Boy fired at the guy and shot him. They arrested Blue Boy and charged him with, I think it was attempted murder and possession of a firearm. If you know more about Blue Boy's current situation, like those comments up. Rest in peace to Larry Davis. Thank you for watching. It's your man Supreme, and you were just tuned in to another episode of The Real Rap Show. And this was episode 51 of The Real Rap Show, the story of Larry Davis. Give this video a like and subscribe to the channel. And don't forget to hit that notification bell so y'all can always stay notified whenever I drop a new episode of The Real Rap Show. Now y'all stay safe out there. Real Rap.